Hello again guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video we are going to be taking a look at Sim Update 8. The update released just a few hours ago and aims to be a bug fixing exercise within the Sim as opposed to bringing any real new content. That seems to have been the popular consensus of the Microsoft Flight Simulator community. Most people would rather see the Sim fixed up as opposed to seeing new features coming in yet again. And I'm definitely on the same page there, there are certainly a few issues within the Sim that I would like to see addressed. So I think it's great that the Sobo have listened to the community and they made the effort here to really try and address some of the issues that the Sim currently has. Sim Update 8 boasts a long list of supposed fixes and features within Microsoft Flight Simulator, namely in the areas of stability, navigation, weather, VR, audio, and the list continues. Most of the Sim's default aircraft have seen some sort of an update, and some of the activities and lessons have been fixed up as well. Lastly, and probably most importantly of course, there have been improvements as well to the Sims flight modelling, namely in the area of propellers. The Sobo have added a new optional propeller simulation system with hundreds of moving surfaces covering the propeller realistically. At the moment we have three default planes in the Sim, the Cessna 152, the Cessna 208B and the Beechcraft King Air 350i, all making use of this new technology. In theory, the new propeller modelling should improve propeller effects such as P-factor, as well as feathering, prop drag and so on. Anyway, the aim of today's video is to put some of the more significant updates to the sim through their paces. As always, I do hope you enjoy the video. If you do, please consider giving it a like and subscribing to the channel. If you have any comments or questions for me, you can leave those down in the comment section below. Our first test is going to be comparing the FPS of the sim in its previous state as opposed to sim update 8. So let's crack on and see what we find there. So starting with the Sims performance post Sim Update 8, the Sobo hasn't claimed that they're looking to make any drastic changes to the Sims overall performance with this update, so we're not expecting to see any significant changes. The focus as far as the Sims overall performance goes is really on stability, there's been ongoing performance optimization work, and a few issues fixed up. Anyway, obviously I can only give you feedback based on my system and my Sim. We're running the exact same scenario on both sides though, we have the default Cessna 152 midday with the few clouds preset. Overall I would say with Sim Update 8 there's been a very slight degradation in my overall FPS. I've gone from about a maximum of 93 FPS in this scenario down to around 91, so of course around a 2 FPS loss. For reference I run my Sim in the high end preset and I only run at 1080p, hence the fairly high frame rate there. So overall again, no drastic changes there to the Sim's performance at least on my system, but good to see that there's been no significant degradation either. Next on to the weather updates and improvements within the sim, it's going to be pretty hard to test some of the improvements so we won't be covering them in the video. Overall the Sobo has looked to improve multi-metal visibility and gestion, fixed up issues with live weather where it could take up to 5 minutes to download. Presets loaded in on the world map will now load up correctly when ready to fly. They fixed up an issue with the wind gust modelling where the gust could be both an increase and a decrease in wind. I think we've seen in some of the landing challenges, specifically I'm thinking of the Dusseldorf landing challenge that that can make for some pretty interesting flying. Apparently cloud thickness has been improved for the overcast effect and we're looking at that right now. The Sobo has also fixed up an issue which prevented live weather from being available at midnight Zulu. And the weather radar has also been back into the hangar for some repairs so we'll be taking a look at that in just a moment's time. Supposedly cloud thickness has been improved for the overcast cloud depiction. Personally looking at the two shots side by side there, I can't see a significant difference. In fact I would say that the two shots look pretty much identical to me. I suspect what a Sobo might mean though is that the overall cloud depth has been increased, and possibly this doesn't affect the overcast preset itself which we're currently running, perhaps it's more relevant to Metar ingestion. Again though it would have been very hard to make a side by side comparison with the older version of the sim, of course the weather on the two days is not going to be the same. Anyway, moving on to the weather radar, one of the previous sim updates unfortunately broke the weather radar such that the picture no longer updated. Just running through a time lapse here with the storm preset, you can see now the right hand side there the updated weather radar, and it's once again functioning correctly. So that's a nice positive change to see, although it is essentially a Sobo fixing up a previous issue that they caused in the sim, but nonetheless it's a very concrete and important feature to have back in the sim. So hopefully all of you should be able to avoid those CBs a little bit better going forward. Next we're going to be starting to look at the most important part of Sim Update 8 and that is the improved prop physics. We're now airborne once again in the default King Air 350i, and we're going to try and carry out two flights, one in the previous version of the aircraft, one in the current version of the aircraft. 
we'll try and fly both profiles as similarly as possible. So just as we fly over the tip of the island we're going to cut the condition lever there on the number one engine. You'll see the torque and the ITT on the number one start to roll back there of course. The RPM does reduce slightly but it stays fairly high. We'll time lapse forward a little bit, we'll let the aircraft speed reduce and once it's stabilised we'll come back. The aircraft speed has now stabilised, we're doing around 189-188 knots. You'll notice looking at the primary flight display there that we don't have much angle of bank on, the aircraft isn't particularly out of balance either. So we're not seeing much in terms of aerodynamic effects from that dead engine. So with the sim in its previous state with sim update 7 it wasn't really very relevant whether or not you actually feathered an engine in the sim, there was no real aerodynamic change. And anyway in the default aircraft such as the King Air 350 it wasn't actually possible to feather the engine. We'll come back on the prop lever all the way to the feathered position. And you'll see that the RPM does roll off but nonetheless we maintain around 300-350 RPM. And with that prop now theoretically feathered, although in actuality in the sim in its previous state the prop isn't feathered, you can see very little change in terms of the aircraft's attitude, no increase in speed there despite in theory having reduced the drag. And if we head outside externally you can see that again with the previous version of the sim it's actually not possible to feather the prop in the King Air 350. So moving on now to Sim Update 8 and this is where things start to get a little bit more exciting in terms of what's been offered by Sobo. Again we're going to try and fly the exact same profile so just as we come overhead the island we'll cut the condition lever on the number one engine. Once again the Torque 90 t rolling off pretty quickly there as you'd expect. Again the prop RPMs remain fairly high there with the prop in the fully forward position. As we did before we'll skip forward a little bit, wait for the aircraft to decelerate and we'll come back once the aircraft speed's stable. So we're now back, the aircraft has stabilised in terms of its speed, this time we're doing around 181 knots so we're nearly 10 knots slower than we were in the previous scenario. Further to that we have quite a lot of bank on, we're also fairly out of balance here, you can see again looking at the primary flight display. So clearly the prop physics have come into play now, we have more drag on the aircraft which overall is causing our unusual attitude and our reduced speed. This is of course why in a real aircraft we'd want to at this point feather the prop, we want to reduce the drag on the airframe, overall increase our performance. And of course do our best to mitigate any of the other aerodynamic effects caused by the failed engine. So once again we'll come back to the feathered position on the prop lever for the number one. And you'll notice this time the RPM does roll off as before but this time we'll go all the way through to zero so in theory the prop is now feathered. That in itself is great, it's brilliant to be able to properly feather the props now by default, that should help some add-on developers to enhance their products outside of the sim. More interesting still though, you'll notice that now we have feathered that prop, the speed is actually going to start to creep back up, we've reduced the drag on the aircraft, we now have more performance. And with less drag now on the left hand side of the aircraft we're actually reducing the imbalance that we had previously, therefore needing less bank to counter that. And you'll notice that the aircraft's attitude overall is going to return to a slightly more normal position. So it is quite clear there that Asobo have managed to achieve what they set out to do. Prop physics obviously are now modelled on the aircraft. We can feather a prop and it does behave accordingly. We do see a reduced aerodynamic effect as a result. If we briefly head outside the aircraft you can see as well that that's all been animated correctly. Again I think this is a really strong improvement for the sim overall. As I mentioned during the introduction we have three aircraft currently available in the sim with the improved prop physics. We have the default Cessna 152 the Cessna 208B Caravan and the default King Air 350i. We've obviously taken a look at the King Air so we'll now take a look at the Cessna 152. We're going to carry out a quick circuit in the older version of the aircraft, we'll then move over to the newer version and again we'll see what we find there in terms of aerodynamics and behaviour with the improved modelling. Okay so we're now in the cockpit of the default Cessna 152 in the previous iteration of the sim. The Cessna 152, one of the aircraft that's supposedly been updated with the improved propeller physics. So we're going to carry out a few tests, I'll try and make them as objective as possible. We'll see how the aircraft handles there and then of course we'll compare with some update 8. So parking brake can come off, coming up on the power. First things first we'll just try some rudder input. We know that the rudder input in the sim is generally very sensitive. I run a minus 50 curve on my rudder and that does help somewhat. But overall, again, the aircraft quite sensitive in yaw. So 
So going back on the yoke. Flaps can come up. In pitch, the aircraft again pretty sensitive in pitch. Certainly more so than I remember the Cessna 152 to be. In roll. Overall the aircraft actually feels pretty good. I think the roll rate's fairly reasonable. And the Cessna 152 actually I've always thought one of the better default aircraft in the sim. Overall it's got no completely outrageous handling characteristics. Anyway we'll just bring ourselves back onto a bit of a downwind position here. We'll just gain a little bit more altitude. So I'll maintain 60 knots for the time being. Again, in pitch at 60 knots with full power. The aircraft pretty sensitive there on the elevator. We'll come back off the power. And the aircraft feels much the same in pitch. Maybe ever so slightly less responsive. Certainly with less airflow now going over the rudder you would expect the aircraft to feel less responsive. And we should see a difference there once we come to fly the updated prop physics version of the aircraft. We'll try a power on stall. So the aircraft's still very sensitive in pitch, even right up to the stall there, but again we've got a lot of prop wash in theory going over the elevator. Keeping the controls full back, the aircraft stalling, spinning out to the left. Come off the controls and recover. So with full power there, the Left wing definitely dropping, the aircraft entering into a spin. We'll just build up a little bit of altitude again, then we'll try a power off stall. So the power coming off. And again, fully back on the controls. This time the nose just mushing down and dropping. So pretty different behaviour there between power on and power off. And again, that's without the prop physics coming into play. So again, overall we should expect to see some difference between the updated version of the aircraft, although I think, generally speaking, that's actually not bad behaviour from the default Cessna 152. Anyway, we'll just make our way back for a landing. We'll carry out a uh, very quick landing here in the aircraft. Again, just to cover off some issues. Most aircraft in the sim seem to have significant ground effect, tend to really float down the runway. We'll see whether or not that changes with Sim Update 8. Speed's back in the white arc, so we'll go straight to full flaps. And again, with full flap, the aircraft pretty twitchy there in pitch. It's going to be interesting to see with the uh, prop wash added whether or not the aircraft actually become even more sensitive on the controls if the Sober have done nothing to dial that out. And we'll come back to idle. We'll just hold the aircraft off. Again, we'll see if we don't float a long way in ground effect. So actually trying to hold the aircraft off the runway for as long as possible. So floating a fair distance there, but again, not completely unreasonable. And as I said, I do think the default Cessna 152, one of the uh, nicer default aircraft to fly in the sim. Anyway, let's head over to Sim Update 8 and we'll see what we find there. So we're back on the ground in Sim Update 8 and we're going to try and fly the same profile again, more or less, so the part brake can come off. Coming up on the throttle. Expecting to potentially see more torque and P-factor from the engine now, as that's modelled with the included prop physics. Aircraft still tracking pretty straight there though at full throttle. And the rudder input feels much the same, arguably even a little bit more sensitive of anything. The 60 knots are so coming back on the stick, the elevator definitely feels more sensitive in pitch there, the aircraft coming straight off the ground. Flaps can come up. Now that we're airborne I would say the elevator feels more or less the same as it did with the previous iteration of the sim. And the same in roll, there's no discernibly significant change there. So we'll head on to our downwinds. 
So far the aircraft feeling very similar in terms of its handling. Again we'll pitch for 60 knots. And elevator authority at 60 knots is still pretty responsive. Coming off the power. There is definitely a noticeable change there, but again we noticed that with the previous version of the Cessna 152. Though the aircraft does feel heavier on the elevator now I would say as the speed falls back. Coming back up to full power we'll go into a power on stall. There's a stall warning. Still got some elevator authority. Fully back on the controls, the left wing dropping as it did previously. And spinning very much the same as it did before. The spin a little bit harder to recover from, I would say. Had to feed in a bit of rudder this time, whereas before really releasing the controls was almost sufficient. Now we'll try a power off stall. And fall back on the stick. Again, the nose just dropping. So, very similar behaviour from the aircraft overall. Again, I think the spin was just a little bit more difficult to recover from. We'll make our way back towards the runway, and again, we'll try a landing. We'll see what the aircraft feels like in terms of ground effect. So, coming back off the power. Just keep the nose up momentarily to get the speed back into the white arc. And we'll take full flap. And as we did previously, we'll try and hold the aircraft off for as long as we possibly can. We're a little bit faster here this time, so we'll just side slip a little to lose some energy. So still a little bit twitchy there in pitch, you can see as we uh, enter into the flare there we're taking bites at the flare rather than one smooth motion, although that might be my flying to some degree. Anyway, there's touchdown. Again, overall the aircraft feels very reasonable, I wouldn't say it feels significantly different from the previous version of the 152. So there you go guys, that's a test of what I consider to be some of the most significant changes within Sim Update 8. Sim Update 8 wasn't quite so feature packed as some of the updates that we've seen thus far in the Sim, but again it was a bug fixing exercise and one that I think the Sim sorely needed. I will say that there are still quite a few issues in the Sim that need fixing and Sim Update 8 perhaps wasn't quite as comprehensive as I was hoping it would be, but there are definitely some positives to take away from the update, of course the prop physics being the main one. I gather as unfortunately tends to be usual in this Sim, a few things have been broken along the way with the update but I'm not going to cover those right now. Personally, I haven't experienced any obvious new flaws yet, and I think it's really only worth me covering what I've experienced personally. For me, the prop physics are definitely a step in the right direction towards making the sim that little bit more simulator-esque, and it gives me quite a bit of hope for Microsoft Flight Simulator overall. If Asobo can continue to develop the flight modelling as they've done here, then I think in the long run we have a very strong sim on our hands. The weather radar is another nice feature to get back. Again, it was actually broken by Asobo, but at least they've fixed it up. And I haven't had a chance yet to look at the improved Meta ingestion myself, but certainly looking forward to trying that one out. The Sims Live weather does slowly seem to be improving, it is moving again in the right direction. But there is still definitely quite a few inaccuracies with it, so hopefully some of those have been addressed with Sim Update 8. Just a final point to note here during the outro, you'll notice that the drone camera is still rotating here over time. It's quite subtle over a short period of time, so it might be fairly difficult to make out, but definitely I've tested it and unfortunately that hasn't been fixed up. That is quite an obvious error, and again, there are quite a few obvious errors in the sim that do still need fixing, so I think Sim Update 8 hopefully will be the first of many bug fixing exercises to come. Anyway guys, I hope once again that's given you a good feel of what Sim Update 8 has to offer. If you enjoyed the video, then please consider giving it a like. If you want to see more content from the channel and you've yet to do so, then please consider subscribing as well. As ever, a huge thank you to my channel members and patrons for all of your support. 
Always appreciated. I hope that all of you are having a great day wherever you are. Take really good care and I will see you all again soon.